The events in the following episode took place on March 23rd and March 24th, 2018. I'm going to count you down into this episode. Five. It's been five months since Adea Shabani began dating Chris Spots before taking her final road trip with him. Four. It's been exactly four weeks since Adea disappeared. Three. It's been three weeks since Adea's family asked me to help and expose the story. Two. It's been two weeks since I've been on the trail of Adea's boyfriend, Chris Spots. One. It's been one day since Chris Spots apparently shot himself after a 60-mile police chase. Zero. I have almost no time left before the story breaks in the news and my window into Chris's world breaks with it. Adea's loved ones are counting on me to find answers because no one, not even the police, have gotten this far with Chris's inner circle. And I'm praying that if Chris is responsible for Adea's disappearance, that the truth didn't die with him. Chapter 15. So Much Hate. Chance said some crazier stuff around that that he said came from Chris, but I don't know. It was pretty crazy. Well, crazy. Like, say something. Say one thing and I'll I'll tell you if it's true. All right. I'm I'm going to tell you this, but this is as unbelievable to me as it is going to be to you. Okay. Okay. I'm at Jaden's house right now and on the phone with Chris Merez the biological father of Chris Spots. And what almost nobody knows, not even Chris's father himself, is that Chris Spots was on his way first to Los Angeles for an acting job where he was going to prove his talent to the world. And then after that, he was going to drive to Wheatland, California, near Sacramento, to visit his father's home with his friend Chance. The pair had two guns, rope, and a tape recorder. And according to Chance, they were prepared to tie up, torture, and possibly kill Chris's father. Because, they claimed, it was not Chris Spots who was responsible for Adea Shabani's disappearance. It was actually his father. In my mind, I'm thinking that Chris was lying to Chance, trying to get his most loyal friend to help him kill his father and shift the blame of Adea's disappearance onto his dad. Chris's father has been very cooperative with Jaden and I throughout this, so I want to let him know what's going on and see if he has any other information that may help find Adea. He said, <laughs> dude, and I've, you've had a fucking brutal 24 hours, so I don't even add this to it. And, and again, keep this between us, but Chance said that Chris thought that somehow you were involved and he was going to LA to do this part and then they're gonna, he was gonna come home with Chance to confront you. What, what, what part? Oh, that, this, uh, this uh, acting role in LA. He, w- he was gonna go do this and, and, come, and come, what was he gonna do, what, what was he gonna say to me? I don't, that doesn't make sense, that's weird. That's fucking weird. Obviously the emotion, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. What the fuck, that doesn't, that doesn't even make sense. What I mean that that's that's insane. That's like fucking crazy shit. Okay, that that's that's funny. That's but no, it is. It's to me, it's funny. It's like what the fuck they're gonna they're gonna front me about what that what that doesn't even that. Chance was saying that Chris was saying that you had done it, that you were responsible. Well, Chance said Chance said that Chris was saying that. Well. Hey, this, 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 what I will tell you, this is what he did say to me about Adia. He said, exactly, she's just like my mom, 
crazy as fuck. He says, that's why I've never dated anybody like my mom. And he couldn't get away from it because he's always, he hates his mom, but he always wanted, he always wanted to kill his mom. But he loves her. He loves her more and then he hates her. You know what I'm saying? And he told me that. As we're listening to Chris Morez, Jaden tries frantically to get my attention. He never said that. But LA County detectives treated me with respect. They came, they said, this is what we got, we got, we got, we, they got that sign from the church. And I'm thinking, this is crazy shit, you know, and they're looking through my whole property and, and they found a hole that was dug, but I think it was from one of the dogs. Jaden hands me a note. It reads, he's avoiding the question. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I don't, I don't know. He, he was so angry at me. That's the reason I, that I'm thinking, my fucking son came up here, killed this girl, buried her on my fucking... And I'm thinking that in my head, because after the scenario, after the detective told me, I'm thinking, you don't even know what I was thinking. My gut was turning... Like, Though this isn't the answer I'm looking for, the story Chris's father is telling is pretty interesting. Detectives showed up at his home with a warrant and investigated a suspicious-looking hole that was dug on his property. Chris's father says he believes it was dug by his dogs. I make a note to explore that further. But he still hasn't responded to Chance's accusation. So I try another approach. Do you think, do you think he said that to Chance? And why do you think he would say something like that to Chance if he uh, did? I don't think he said that, but, I, but he has said a lot of shit to, to his friends, to his brother, you know, that he, he was so angry at me. But like I said, I've never met any of his girlfriends. I've never met Mary. I've never met any of his girlfriends. And that's what's crazy because he always kept it from a distance from me because I think it was, like I said, the insecurity. I think he was afraid in his head thinking that they're going to like me. No, 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 but that, that that's some crazy shit. No, no, dude, come on. I mean, I don't even know this girl. I, I've never met this girl. I didn't even know they had, I didn't know it was this bad. Mm-hmm. To be honest with you, I thought it was like, Oh, he's trying to be with her, be with her. I didn't know it was going to get to this extent. What a fuck. You know, this girl's no. going to be missing. My son's dead. I, this was like unreal shit. But my son would make up shit. My buddy, my son was a good storyteller. He, he could tell you shit. What happens to him? Once you get the truth, it's like bent to the fucking left. You know, it's like, holy shit. This is, you know, he added it to juice it up a little bit, to make it a little bit better, you know. And that's what he did. What's going through my head right now is that when I first called Chris Morez, he was saying the nicest things about his son. But after I told him that his son believed that he was responsible for Dea's disappearance, suddenly, Chris Morez has changed his tune and is throwing his son under the bus. So I'm going to tell you the rest of what Chance said. Yeah. Chance said that we're going to go back. He said, I'm going to tie, this is talking about you, and again, please keep this between us, okay? Um, yeah. he, he said, I'm going to go back, we're going to tie him up, and we're going to torture him. We're going to find out where he put a day at, even if we have to kill him. That's what Chance said. Chris said. So what I said that. That's what Chance said. Chris said. So I'm going to ask you now. <laughs> Jaden looks at me. I look at him. That laugh. Do you think that wow. he was going to try to get Chance to do this with him? Did he have that much so anger? He's still, so, so. So, so you just confirmed that, that he still has that hate. See what he, he was going to do. He was going to do, he was going to kill, uh, you know what, and I'll be honest with you. Every time he come and see me, and when he stayed with me, I, I was, I'll be honest with you. I thought maybe he was going to poison me, he was going to do shit, put shit into my alcohol when I come home and have a drink at night. I had that fear, and I'll be honest with you, because he has so much hate. But that confirms, he probably did say that to Chance. And you know what the sad part about it is? He never told me he did anything like that. All he told me is he dropped her off. But in my head, I thought this many times, that he was going to do that. When I when they dug that hole up there, I'm thinking, my son, try to do this. But see, the craziest thing is, like I told the detectives, I said, you would think he would say something to me. He didn't say me anything. Ugh, anything about anything. You know what I'm saying? And that's what's crazy about this. And you tell me that, that Chance said that they were going to come and kill me? He, he said, they, he said, not that they were going to come and kill you, they were going to come and tie you up, and they were going to do, uh, I don't know whether they said beat you or whatever it was, till they got the truth out of you, even if they, even it meant <laughs> killing you. Like, and, and I'm sorry to share that information with you. No, 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 I'm glad you did, because, no, 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 dude, I, I, I have that. I, I, I've had that in my, 
and I'll be honest with you, he wanted, he, if he had a chance, he would probably try to kill me or kill me in some way because he had such anger. You know what I'm saying? He just had so much anger. I didn't know he had that much anger, but it seems like he, that's pretty fucking crazy when you tell somebody you're going to do that. I hang up with Chris's father and feel completely confused. I began the call thinking that Chris Botts was feeding his friend Chance a false story so he could torture a confession out of his father and then kill him, thus exonerating himself. Now I'm not so sure. And I'm torn between three different scenarios. One is that Chris Botts did something to Adea on the way to Sacramento then shot himself to avoid facing the consequences of his actions. The second is that Adea did something to herself to get back at Chris. But frankly, the more I learn, the harder I'm finding that to believe. I don't think Adea was even obsessed with Chris. I think she was obsessed with getting Chris to tell her the truth and decide who he wanted to commit to. The third is that Chris Merez, Chris's father, is somehow involved. And what's really odd here is not only did he keep avoiding the question of his guilt, but he never for a moment defended his son. In fact, after I told him what Chance had said, he went from saying that his son is a great kid and has never had a parking ticket in his life to saying that Chris is a hateful homicidal maniac who is going to poison his own dad and kill his own mother. Chapter 16, The Dam Has Broken. Call me anytime and I'll get you right away. Bye. Ooh, now, they, now the news is talking to friends. Bro, oh, which friends? She said your friends say she's no longer alive. But her friends don't know that. I know, it's stupid. I mean, I'm just going to tell her it's my job to be optimistic. I can't confirm that. Yeah, well, no, you can just say, like, nobody knows. Like, you really can't say, you really can't run with that because nobody knows. So, wait, they, so, uh, so somebody, uh, another person I know, she said, hey, she said, uh, our station, ah, shit, this is, this is, they just, somebody just broke it. All right. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, so I, friend, that was, that was my friend. She just called. She said, I got, she said, I got to run it. All right, yeah. I don't, she, said every, every, she said everybody's breaking it now. It's still a mystery what happened to 25-year-old Adea Shabani. Now a twist. Sources say a man she was romantically involved with killed himself last night after leading authorities on a chase from Hesperia to Corona. The Toyota Tacoma he was driving was linked to a crime in L.A. County. CHP says the car was believed to be used in a homicide, but wouldn't confirm details. But in that, in that story... Um, they did not name him. All right, but you... there's three news stories here, but there's nothing on him. What do you mean there's nothing on him? Oh, they don't say his name? They're not naming, they're not naming him. Jaden Brandt is a private investigator for the Shabani family. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I, I can't confirm any details uh, regarding that at this time. It just remains an active investigation. I had originally gone to Jaden's to wait for Chance to call so we could go meet him in Riverside. But with still no word from Chance, I start driving home. But as I'm in the car talking to Jaden about Chris Merez and that very strange phone call, my phone rings. I look down and see it's from Jade Spots, Chris's mother. I haven't even spoken to Chris's mother yet. So I wonder what she could possibly be calling about and what she knows. Hello. Oh, hey, Jaded. It's Neil. I thought, did you just call me accidentally, or? No. I, there are just a couple things that I want you to know. Um, one is, I the police just kept harassing us, harassing Chris, the LAPD. They came here to Colorado, even. And he had an attorney that had spoke with them several times, saying, if you want to meet with Chris, Give me a time, and I will take him to you. You're kidding. 
How are you even involved? That's so amazing. I mean, is it their family pushing for all of this press? We don't know how that's happening. That other voice belongs to Chris's stepfather, Jack. I originally got in, got involved because um, there was another case happened to someone in my neighborhood, and I started looking into it and seeing all these problems with the police. I tell Chris's mother and stepfather the whole story of how Adea's mother asked me to help. When your child goes missing, you do everything you can to find them. You place your hopes in the police. You hire a private investigator. You get your friends and family involved. But the LAPD is overwhelmed with 3,900 missing persons reports a year and is limited by government procedure and budget. A private investigator is expensive and friends and family can only do so much. So a day his mother thought a journalist could help get the word out and ultimately help find a day. There's a lot of things that don't fit. If that's yeah, the best way to put it. Enough. And and uh, Jay tell you they would only call at like 3.30 in the morning when we were dead asleep to try to catch Jade completely off guard. They, you know, there's a reason they don't call at 3.30 in the afternoon. We but, don't know what that is, but it's the technique that they're using to try to trip anybody up. They, they even came here way after he had the attorney and showed up at night, of course, or after the sun was down. And they, I invited them in. I said, I have nothing to hide from you guys. Our attorney has already said how corrupt you are, and they lied repeatedly and said our attorney had never contacted them. And I said, that's a lie, because I spoke with her today, and she told me over three times that she's made reached out to you guys. It seems clear from speaking to Chris's mom, Jade, that she feels her son was not a perpetrator, but a victim, and that in her mind, it wasn't guilt that led to his death, but fear of the police. I haven't personally experienced the LAPD as scary so far. If anything, they've been cooperative with Jaden and receptive to any information we've brought them. I'm surprised that Jade is calling me, considering the amount of grief she must be in, but I'm sure she wants to know the truth as much as Adea's family does. I tell Jade that I don't know what the truth is, but I promise that I will find it out. She then shares this warning, and I'm not sure who it's referring to, but I can tell this family is scared. You need to be careful, Neil, as a reporter. You need to be careful. You, you don't want them after you. Are there other inconsistencies or things that I should kind of look into? Right now, that's all I can think of. But if something comes up, I will call you. Great, and I want to give you guys a heavy warning that the media have been calling, asking for names, asking for this kind of stuff, so just... I don't know what to say. You've already been through like the hardest 24 hours, so get ready for just another, you know, rough time. But I really, I don't know what people are going to say. I don't know what the police are going to say. But uh, yeah, I just want to kind of give you a heads up. All right. Thank you. For the time. Thank, you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. It's been an intense day. Just about everyone has opened up, and everyone appears to want to know the truth. The problem is that everyone has a different story. They all seem to have these puzzle pieces. However, a lot of the puzzle pieces just don't fit. In fact, everything we know implicating Chris Spots is actually circumstantial evidence. Even though we've been so focused on him, there's no proof yet that he did this and that Adea is in fact dead, as the news is reporting. While I've been on the phone with Chris's mom, one of Jaden's reporter friends calls him and says, the dam has broken, the story's out there now. They're naming Chris Spots as a suspect who was wanted, who was, who was, who was being, she says that, she says that they confirmed that he was um, being arrested for homicide or for, you know, you know, homicide. That's what they were pulling over. I doubt that. Startling new developments regarding a missing model. For the first time, the connection between her boyfriend, a deadly pursuit, and an apparent love triangle. Robert Kabasik is live in Hollywood tonight with a model live with new details you'll only hear about here. NBC4 has learned that when this 25-year-old model left her apartment here on Wilcox Avenue in Hollywood, she may not have done so willingly. She was with her boyfriend, but did she know he was leading a double life? 
Chris Spots shot himself at the end of a high-speed pursuit last night near Corona. He was the alleged suspect in the murder of a 25-year-old model and aspiring actress from Macedonia. We don't yet know the name of the passenger with Spots, but we've learned the 33-year-old had just returned to Southern California from Colorado, where he was with his fiance. As for his girlfriend, Adea Shabani reported missing on February 23rd. NBC4 has learned four days later, Adea's friends went to the LAPD and recounted an anonymous phone call received the night before on February 26th. The caller told them they observed the missing placed in the bed of a truck by her boyfriend and that she appeared to be, quote, drugged and in danger. The LAPD contacted Spot soon after who hung up on them and turned off his phone. Inside his pickup truck last night, Chris Spots took his own life. And so Chris Spots' name is now out there. For those who've been listening closely to this podcast, it's worth correcting a few errors in the news reports to avoid any confusion. From here on, anything in the news needs to be sort of taken with a grain of salt. First of all, as we know, Adea did not leave the apartment unwillingly. She left willingly, thinking she was going to the funeral of Chris's uncle. Adea knew that Chris Botts was leading a double life, and she knew all about his fiance Mary. Adea was not in the bed of the truck, and she was not drugged when she left her apartment. Those came from a false tip. Chris Spots was not in Colorado with Mary. Mary was already back in L.A., as we know. And finally, Chris Spots did not hang up on the LAPD. According to Mary, they had an eight-minute phone call, and that was before Chris hired a lawyer. But the overall point remains true. Chris Spots, the person of interest in Adea Shabani's disappearance, is now dead. Adea Shabani is still missing. And Chance, the guy who was in the car with Chris and is probably our best shot at finding out where Adea is, has disappeared. There's a lot to be done. Chapter 17. You'll never have peace. The next morning, I spent hours just thinking about everything and talking to people, trying to make sense of everything that's happened in the last day. I've been so upset with the police for not arresting Chris Spots if they were so sure it was him. But the long and short of it is that the police were never going to arrest Chris Spots without a body or definitive proof that he was involved, which they evidently don't have. There's still been no word from chance. I worry for a moment that maybe he's done something reckless, like gone to finish what he and Chris had started. So I try him again. Fortunately, he answers. How are you doing today, man? Um, I'm I'm better today, dude. Yesterday was fucking rough, bro. Like, that whole thing didn't hit me, and then I didn't get any sleep. I went and bought a bottle of whiskey and just cried and drank all day. So uh, I'm quite a bit better today, but... It's a grief stage, but now it's just kind of all sinking in. As tough a time as he's had, Chance seems like he's doing better today. Over the course of the conversation, he's actually able to clear up a number of lingering questions. Chris's mom told me that when they pulled over the truck, they were saying a stolen vehicle. Is that right? Yeah, that is right, bro. That's what they, they lied to me the whole time they had me in custody, saying it was a stolen vehicle. And uh, they needed to know the name of the driver, but I heard it come over the radio as the, as the truck came back registered to Chris Spot. So I was like, that's fucking bullshit, dude. You dumbass. Yeah. I didn't even turn down the radio. I just heard him fucking tell you it's registered to Chris Spot. How's it stolen? And the fucking top that had me was this young dipshit, dude. And he's like, oh, well, uh, uh, and I didn't know what the fuck to say to that. So I was like, I'm not saying shit, dude. But, yep. you know, <clears throat> but then later it says that, uh, that it was a glitch in the system, and it came back as actually it wasn't stolen. And then I heard him say that the license plate came back as connected to a homicide or some shit like that. They didn't know what the fuck it. They were just lying out their asses the whole time, dude. It's really fucking weird how we got pulled over. Super weird. 
We didn't do anything wrong. I was going to ask you, man, did, did he say anything about Mary near the end? Why did I tell her that? Oh, yeah, dude. All the time, he, he was so distraught. Like, he, he, time and time again, he told me what a good girl she was, what a great person she was, and how he just fucking hated himself for fucking it up. I mean, he explained to me his mommy issues, which, which made him, like, want to love and be with Mary, but, like, other girls, the, uh, why you couldn't commit to one girl kind of thing. Yeah, no, I know. I think he was like, he was like really psychologically adept. He was, he was real good yeah. at all that shit. What's also interesting is that Chance tells me that Chris and his friend Brian, who I spoke briefly with after hearing the news about Chris, had a falling out. That makes having a real conversation with Brian more of a priority for me. I've bleeped out Brian's real name here. Like, dude, he told me some real crazy shit that this is, like, oh man, like, I, I'm gonna probably start following right through this, but like, his original thing, like, when he came to Colorado Springs, he, he, you know, we went out to eat, he says, and everybody's turned their back on me. Won't talk to me, Robbie won't talk to me, none of my friends in LA will talk to me, Every, like, I'm fucking, I'm out here doing this thing all by myself. Except my grandma and you are the only fucking people that'll talk to me. I don't know, dude, Chris told me shit, just, I had become real judgmental and real, uh, you know, like critical of, of everything. And Chris said, he said, I knew you would be the one motherfucker to ride with me on this little dude. So that I had a feeling and I was right. He also told me a story that um, it was a couple of days after she went missing, he was asleep. And he like felt a presence on top of him and, and his whole body started tingling and like he heard this whisper in her voice and and it said, you'll never have peace. I wonder if the nightmare was a prophecy or an indication of a guilty conscience. While I've been on the phone with Chance, Jaden has been trying to reach me. Hey, man, what's happening? I just saw you called. No, no, I was just calling because I just got off CNN. Oh, shit. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to give you a heads up. I mean, they, they put the whole, I mean, they're putting the whole thing together. Right. So you know, like as you talk to the family, I mean, they know about him, they know about the fiance, they know he was up in Colorado, they know he had a friendly car. It's only a matter of time before they start running his acting reel. One of the guys was talking to me about that, saying, you know, have you seen this guy's acting reel? It's like uh, real life. You know, the guy's running around with a gun talking about he's going to kill everybody. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. It, all this stuff's going to eventually come out. Yeah, yeah, they're going to be at Mary's front door pretty quick here, I'd say. I asked Jaden if there's been any news about the search for Adea in the Lake of the Woods area, where police believe that Chris stopped for 40 minutes on the way to Sacramento. He tells me there's been no update, and it's still off the radar of the media. So no one really knows where she is. So what, what are they planning to do, like an article uh, news piece segment, or what are they planning to do? Oh, no, it was live. Oh, it was live? Yeah. Ashley Banfield, Crime and Justice. I mean, she didn't, you know, have the show on it. Right. Did they have, any, did they have uh, anything that you didn't know? No. Yeah, they had some attorney on the segment with me. Yeah. She's on there going, it's game over for this guy. He's definitely killed. Like, I mean, you know, they just, they just sensationalize it. Yeah, my question is, what happens? Are they still going to investigate? Do they care who did it anymore? Know. Yeah. I mean, because she's talking about, you know, we're receiving information that somebody said that she was put into the back of the truck, and they're talking about, like, that's what initiated the chase. So they don't have that quite right. I mean, I did correct them. You know, I'm trying to correct things that have already been stated. Right. And I stated that that, you know, that was a tip that was received very early on, and that was, you know, all right, so maybe I'll anyway, yeah, I'll but, you know, maybe maybe we'll maybe reach out to the family and Mary. I can give, give Mary yeah, a heads up. I would just say, you know, it, it looks like it's getting out there pretty quick. So it's only going to be a matter of time before Mary's name out there. Yeah, I mean, they don't care. All right, I'll give uh, I'll give Mary I'll give Mary a heads up. But before I can call Mary, she calls me. Hello, hey Neil. Did, did something just happen? Are you okay? No, I mean, you know, it just comes and goes. Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about you uh, a lot. Um, but I'll let you start. Did you call about something specific? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think... Oh, yeah. The, you wanted to know that what series that he was supposed to film? Yeah. Um, it's called Shokes. S-H-O-A-K-S. 
great. And I only were able, was able to find an email contact. Okay, great. That that works. Oh, I was going to tell you that from what I hear, CNN has been really, you know, it's like a really pounding down the doors on the story. So, you know, there's a chance that your name might start to leak out in the next day or so. So just get ready. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I live, I know I lived a simple, simple life. And this is all just so surreal. We talk about Chance, who Mary still hasn't spoken with. And I pass on the message that Chris felt bad about how he'd messed things up with her. Mary says she forgave Chris. And then we talk about what people who knew Chris have been saying about him. I assume also his father's not been saying nice things about him. I, I'm hearing more and more stories about him. And, oh, like, I, the more I hear, the more that I think that he probably had everything to do with this. When I've talked to him, he's always been on the fence. He'll say positive things and negative things. He'll say, think Chris did it. And he'll say, think Chris can never. He kind of goes, he just goes to both. He plays both sides of it, it seems like. He does. And there's nothing negative about Chris. Like, I'm sure everything that he said has been a lie. He told me the same story about him having full custody, but nothing to do that he was beating his mother, leaving knives in her bed, going after her, threatening her multiple times, breaking into their house. Like, it just, the list goes on and on. I know, I know Chris told me he, she's at least called him twice, um, looking for my Chris, because she couldn't get a hold of him. Uh, I I know my Chris. I know. I know him. He didn't do it. All this, I know our lies. And, um, actually Jade had mentioned that if you wanted to talk to some people at his service or, um, just listen, because we were having, going to have an open mic, sort of, um just to talk about Chris. That would be great. That she would be open to doing that. I'll double check with her again. Okay. Um, and is, and obviously, is it, uh, I assume it's in Colorado or is it in LA? It is. It's going to be in Colorado on Saturday. Okay. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll just leave, make, leave that open and then let me know. I'm obviously not going to show up at anything where I'm not invited as a guest of the family, of course. Right. So, okay. Yeah. I tell Mary, just to be clear, that I'm not assuming anything about Chris. I'm just trying to find out what happened to Adea. But Mary is so convinced of Chris's innocence that she makes a generous offer. One so powerful that it will ultimately prove with 100% certainty whether Chris was involved in Adea's disappearance or not. Coming up on To Live and Die in L.A. Hi, uh, is this where they bring the truck to? What kind of truck is this? It's uh, Tacoma, 2015. What, is, what does that mean when it's all shrink, shrink plastic wrapped? It's under investigation. Oh, it's under investigation. Well, I can pretty much say he was shot this way. I really? Mean, you have a lot of blood over here, blood down here, and you have no blood on the A pillar except for this right here. Well, I mean, just think about it. If the bullet is exiting this window, well, first of all, nobody shoots themselves four times in the head. One of the reasons I'm doing this podcast is to specifically ask for information on behalf of both families now involved. So if you know anything about anyone involved, even if it doesn't appear to relate directly to this case, please email us at livedieLA at tenderfoot.tv or call us at 213-204-2073. We can keep your name and identity completely anonymous if you want. This podcast has been a production of Tenderfoot TV and Neil Strauss in conjunction with Cadence 13. Executive producers are Neil Strauss, Donald Albright, and Payne Lindsay, along with producers Alex Vespasted, and Mike Rooney. The original music and score you're hearing is by Makeup and Vanity Set. The theme song is by Flurry. It's called Love and War. And the art and design are by Trevor Eiler.
You can find us on social media at Live Die LA Pod. And our website is LiveDieLA.com. Special thanks to Rich Berner, Kevin Richter, Chris Corcoran, Oren Siegel, Ryan Fishback, Ingrid Della O, Oren Rosenbaum at UTA, Resonate, and the Nord Group. Thank you for listening, for subscribing, and for your feedback.